So far, we've created tetrominoes and hooked them up to various inputs that will occur while playing our game. In this video, we will spend some time creating the board which will contain all of the blocks which are currently in play. Let's start by creating a board module. Our board is going to be made up of blocks, so let's start by importing block, exposing its type. We'll be making some blocks, so let's go ahead and import color for constructing them. We'll also be using the dictionary module, and so let's go ahead and import dict, exposing the type dict. This will be useful for defining our board type. Our board will need to be drawn to the screen, so we'll also import graphics.collage, exposing everything. And finally, let's import tetromino, exposing the two types we've defined in it, tetromino and location. With those out of the way, let's continue by defining our board to be a dictionary of locations to blocks. Dictionaries allow us to easily look up and store values based on a key. In this case, we want to be able to look up and store blocks associated with their location in our board. Now that we have this type, let's create a function for creating a board. It will take in a list of pairs from location to block and produce a board. To do this, we'll use the dictionary.fromList function, which takes in a list of keys and values and returns a dictionary from those keys to those values. Something to note here is that the argument list for our function is the exact same as the argument list for dict.fromList. This means we can actually get rid of the blocks argument that we have here. Notice now, our new function is actually synonymous with from list, except it specifies a specific type. The standard size for a Tetris board is 10 columns wide and 20 rows tall. Next, let's create a background for our board to sit on top of. It will be a rectangle. Its width will be the number of columns in a board times the size of our blocks. And its height will be the number of rows in our board times the size of our blocks. Finally, let's make it filled and black. Let's go ahead and Load this up, make sure we don't have any type errors. The compiler's happy. The next thing we need to do is figure out how we want to get the blocks from our board onto the background. Writing that function that does all of that at once seems difficult to me, so let's break it down by first writing a function that can do it for a single block. I'm going to call it add block. It is going to take in the location where I want to add the block, the block I want to add, and the form I want to add it to. Finally, it will produce the form with the block at that location. Our block form is going to come from the two form we defined in block. Then, we need to move it to the correct X and Y position. Remember, our X axis is controlled by our column, and we need to scale it by our block size. Similarly, our Y is controlled by our row. We can now group our block form with the form that was passed in to produce the form with that block added in. Let's refresh to check to make sure we have no type errors. And we do have one little typo here. You'll notice I typed add block twice. Let's refresh again. And now the compiler is happy. 
All right, let's test this out. I'll create a test form, which will be the result of adding a blue block at 0, 0 to our background. To see what it looks like on the screen, let's write a main which will have a collage of size 600 by 600, and it will contain our test form. Let's refresh. Notice this isn't quite what we want. The blue block is in the center of the board, which happens to be 0, 0 on the screen. However, we actually want the block to be at 0, 0, which is the bottom left of our board. Let's fix this real quick in our add block function. We'll define two values, offset x and offset y. We need to shift our x and y by half the board size to the left and down. Let's not forget that we also need to scale this by the size of our block. Now let's add that to our call to move. And refresh. And notice we have our rows and columns mixed up. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. And refresh one more time. Notice now that our block is actually half a block too far to the left and half a block too far down. So let's go ahead and subtract that from our rows and columns. And let's refresh one more time. One more minor little thing, which I'm not even sure if you can see in the video, but that border around our block is actually bleeding over past our background. And because I'm a crazy person, I need to fix it right now, so I'm going to go ahead and add a border to our background. The border will be outline, black, and solid, and it will be the same shape as our background. Finally, using group, I'll merge these two things together, and refresh. Ah, isn't that much better? All right, let's try to stay focused here. Now, where was I? Right, we were testing our add block function. Let's make a few more calls with it just to see if it's working the way we want it to. Let's make a test form prime, which will be the result of adding a red block at one zero to our test form. And then let's add it to our main and refresh. And we get a red block. We'll do one more test here. Let's add a block at 0, 1, that is the color yellow. And this is going to be added to our test form prime. So I'm going to call it test form double prime. And we'll update our main function and refresh. And there we have it. We can see that our add block will take whatever form we pass in and add a block to it. Now, let's see if we can use it to build a two-form function for our entire board. What we want to do is repeatedly apply our add block function to each location block pair in our board. Luckily, there happens to be a function that does exactly that. It's called fold. If you look at the dictionary module, you'll actually see that there are two folds, a fold R and a fold L. The difference between the two has to do with the order in which the values in the dictionary are visited. In our case, the end result will be the same, and I'm going to use fold R. It takes in the function we want to apply to each value in our dictionary, which happens to be add block. It also wants the very first form we are going to use. This is going to be our background. Finally, we'll give it board, which happens to be the dictionary we want to apply it to. Not too bad, right? We're almost done. All that is left is to test this out. Let's start by creating a test board.
we'll go ahead and use the new function we defined, and we're going to create four blocks. We're going to create a blue block at 0, 0. A yellow block at 0, 1. A red block at 1, 0. And a green block at 1, 1. And then let's go ahead and add this to our main. And there it is. We've successfully created a two form for our board, which will take each of the blocks inside of it and draw it to the specific location we want it at. Awesome! In the next video, we'll continue by writing a few helper functions for our board module.